Hello everyone, I'm Dave the Prayer Guy. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. I greatly appreciate it. Go ahead after you watch this one to check out some of my previous videos. If you're new here, check it out. Um, hopefully that they're all an encouragement. And my fuel, my vision, is to feel God's mission with prayer. So that is what I do. My ministry is also to encourage other people to do that as well as I'm doing that. I lead by example. I teach on it. I do these videos. So there's a lot of things I kind of do to kind of encourage the using prayers to fuel of God's mission. And one of our mission places is the home, is raising our kids. And so I want to start out reading Proverbs 1.8, you know, that wonderful proverb that Solomon wrote. So it says, listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Now, Solomon is an interesting individual. He, you know, God asked him, I, I will give you anything that you asked me. And he asked for wisdom, probably one of the smartest things he could have asked for. And so he wrote a bunch of Proverbs. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, you know, that was Solomon. That was one of the great things about Solomon. Solomon was also, depending how you count things, you know, there was a guy who kind of claimed to be king in the book of Judges. So in some ways, he's the fourth king of Israel. But let's just go with him being the, the third king of Israel. You got Saul, David, and then Solomon. Solomon was the son of David. Um, and here, you know, he is telling his son to listen to his instruction and not to forsake the teaching of his mother. And if you read the rest of this passage, there's all kinds of instructions that Solomon has for his, for his son. And most of it's about avoiding sin. And a big part of avoiding sin, according to Solomon, is, is not getting mixed up in the wrong crowds or being smart. Yeah, not getting mixed up in the wrong crowds. That was mostly what he's talking about. And, and so... I, those are important instructions for our, for ourselves and for our kids to know and for us to teach. But there's all kinds of wisdom in the Bible that we as parents need to follow. And there's an interesting line here that he says, yes, listen to your father's instructions, but don't forsake the teachings of your mother or something like that. And, and so that's interesting how he brings up his own teaching but he's also telling his son to not forsake what he learned from his mother. It's almost like there is a teamwork aspect to parenting, to teaching kids about the gospel, about Jesus, that it's the father. Yes, the father is the spiritual leader in the home, but the mother has a very important role too, and they need to work as a team. They need to work together. And so I think also there's a team, a partnership with between the parents and the church. Some of you might have heard of this concept, the orange concept. They have a big conference, or they haven't the last couple of years because of COVID, um, down in, I think, Atlanta, Georgia, where they talk about this the orange concept. It's not my idea, but it's a great idea. Uh, I think it's come from the Rethink group. Maybe I'll put in a, a, a um, link in the description when I'm done recording the video about the Rethink group. But they kind of came up with, you had the, the parents love their kids, the church, and so they're red because the heart is usually signified with red, and the church is yellow, the light of the world, and when you mix red and yellow together, you get orange, and so you have the partnership between the church and the parents, the teaching the kids. So as I'm thinking about this video, you know, I think it's important that we have a plan. We have a plan in place. I mean, Solomon wrote down his instructions for his son. So have a plan. Be prayerful about that plan. Figure out who's going to teach what. Be prayful about that. You know, ask God, you know, who who is more equipped to share the gospel? Who is more equipped to teach budgeting who's more equipped you know you list all these things down that you really want your kids to learn who's more equipped that it, 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 have it be based on that have it be based on god's wisdom and that you know and pray about it put the action in place and have others pray for you 
you know, have your parents pray for you. I bet, I bet the grandparents of your children will just would love to pray for what you're doing with the kids. You know, ask prayer of your best friend, ask prayer of your church and your pastor, and hopefully the church is praying for parents to teach the kids. Uh, if they're not, and you know, be an encourager in that, that parents will do that. And when you're thinking about what your kids want to learn, um, remember you, you know, I listed some ideas earlier, but it's really about what do you want them to know before they leave home, before they become adults. And hopefully they'll come out of your, your home as prayer warriors and as evangelists to advance God's kingdom. So it all comes back to prayer again and, and planning with God and getting the prayer support that you need. All right, so that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope it's an encouragement to you. May the Lord be with you. And please subscribe to the channel and like this video. And once again, I want to end with may the Lord be with you.